Hi, John Cameron here to talk to you on the pad print blog today about drying and curing. Something everybody always asks is, how soon after I print these parts can I ship them? And the answer we always give them is, it depends. It really does depend on, number one, whether you're using a single component pad printing ink or a two component. A one component pad printing ink is an ink that just uses an additive like a thinner uh, or a retarder, for example. It does not have a catalyst or hardener. Two component inks are the ink plus hardener plus a thinner. When you're dealing with a single component, you have to make sure um, that you have it correctly matched up with your substrate. If you have the correct ink going on the substrate and you dry it, you can reasonably expect in most cases to have that stuff stick and be cured on the part probably within anywhere from a few minutes to 24 hours. Once you start talking about uh, two component pad printing inks and adding a catalyst, uh, it's a little bit different story. First thing you need to realize is that there's a couple of kinds of hardener. There's a cyanoacrylate hardener, which is basically just super glue. And then there's isocyanate or diisocyanate hardeners that are a little bit different. They're, they're kind of like a, a time cured. Uh, they react a little bit with humidity. Uh, in either case, it's very important that you um, are careful to mix them according to the manufacturer's instructions. The, the ratio of ink to hardener is very important. A little too much hardener and the ink's pot life is going to be short. The ink might not print very well. Not enough hardener and the ink's not going to be as mechanically or chemically resistant as you want it to. So it's important to weigh the components. Uh, typically we use a gram scale because it's much more accurate than ounces. We add the ink, put the hardener in there, and men, uh, blend those two parts together before we add thinner. We don't want to add thinner directly onto hardener because that can shorten your pot life, causes something uh, that we refer to as solvent shock. Once you mix those components together, you have a pot life. That means that there's a certain period of time where you can use that ink and there's still going to be a chemical reaction after you print it to make it cure. Typically, pot lifes are 8 hours, 10, 12 hours, something like that. After that time, you may still be able to transfer the ink, but the ink isn't going to cure anymore. So, back to drying and curing. Drying the part is simply removing the solvent from it. So, once you've printed that part, you run it through your belt, uh, you down the conveyor, through the dryer, you're evaporating the solvent out. So, it's dry to touch. It says that on a lot of technical application sheets, it'll say, dry to touch in 30 seconds or two minutes. And then you go to the next section and it says curing. Curing takes time. There's no way around it. Uh, you can maybe accelerate it slightly by running them through a dryer or exposing them to uh, infrared lights. But in the end, curing takes time. Uh, most two component inks are going to require at minimum 24 hours um, more likely 72 hours or even five days in some cases or more before they reach their maximum hardness uh, and, and adhesion. A couple things that are very important to, to, uh, to recognize is that in that cure schedule, in that period of time where the parts have to, uh, to cure out, um, because the, the hardeners react with uh, humidity in the air, you don't want to take a part that has a two component ink on it and for example put it in a plastic bag and seal the bag because it can't breathe anymore the ink isn't going to cure in a bag um, also when you have a two component ink um, prior to the end of the cure schedule you you shouldn't apply a protective film um, like on appliance panels for example you get a new washer and dryer it's got the clear foam over it that's typically going to encapsulate the ink and make it so it doesn't cure underneath it um, the other thing is the temperature. Uh, if you look at the technical data for your two component ink, more than likely they're going to have a, a, a temperature on there that is a minimum that you want those parts to be stored at. The reason is because at certain temperatures the chemical reaction between the hardener and the ink stops and you can't restart it. It could be 55 degrees Fahrenheit, could be 45, depends on your ink and hardener combination. But you want to make sure that you, you don't, uh, for example, print parts today, put them in a cold UPS truck in Michigan in the middle of the winter time, and have them tested at the lab tomorrow because the ink's not going to work. I've seen it happen, happen to me when I was in the automotive industry. We would uh, try to get parts out the plant before they're ready. We'd print them. They get put in a cold truck. 
and uh, they get to the manufacturer, be assembled, and uh, the ink on the windshield wiper knob would fail or something. And most of the time it was because either they were trying to put parts together inside of the 72 hours that it was required for curing, or we shipped them and it was too cold outside. So things to be aware of. Now everybody's tempted these days to to uh, assume that UV inks are the, the cure to this problem, and they really aren't. Uh, UV inks are useful for pad printing in certain applications, but um, they're not the answer to two-component inks and the, the curing time requirement. In most cases, when we're dealing with UV inks in pad printing, we still add hardener to make them uh, more durable, more, uh, more resistant. Um, just like a two-component ink, UV inks have to be correctly matched up with the substrate. You, you can't use certain types of ink um, on certain substrates. They just won't adhere and perform regardless. Um, secondly, a limitation with UV ink is that for every color you print, you have to cure right away. With a conventional solvent-based pad printing ink, we can do um, you know, one, two, three, four colors in rapid succession, then take the part off, run it through a dryer, um, evaporate the solvent out and the thing cures all four colors together at the same time. With UV, you've got to print a color cure before you can print another color over it. Otherwise, uh, they just smear together because they don't have the same chemistry that a conventional ink does. So that really kind of makes it so that, you know, UV inks work great for something like this mouse where it's one color, small format. You can print it. Um, run it through the, the UV and, and uh, it's, it's cross length. probably within 24 hours you're safe to ship it. Other applications you're still going to have some post curing where after the ink's been run through the UV reactor it's still going to be cross linking for uh, 24 hours up to several days so not always the, uh, the cure to having to have work in process laying around the plant. Anyway that's a little bit about drying and curing. Uh, if there's anything we can do give us a call. Thanks.